2011, I traveled to Las Vegas for the very first time. Las Vegas, the city where huge casinos ne sit next to each other and where every evening you can watch a fantastic show by the Cirque du Soleil. But I didn't travel to Las Vegas to gamble or to watch those shows. No, I traveled to Las Vegas to attend a set of conferences called Magic and Meaning, where we explore the philosophy and the history of the art of magic. And during the event, I had the opportunity to perform in front of celebrities, master magicians I admire and adore, Jeff McBride, Eugene Berger, Lauren Sass. If you are outside of the field of magic, you might not know those names, but you can compare them to what Brad Pitt is for movies, what Celine Dion is for singing, or what Elon Musk is for entrepreneurship. That kind of celebrities. That day, I performed a piece about how our, our desire to win can trick us in every moment of our lives. The performance went very well, and the audience liked my performance, but something did surprise me. You see, during the break for refreshment that happened after the show, Jeff McBride, Brad Pitt, came to me and told me something like, you know, I liked your, how you weave the story within your piece, but I was at the back of the room and it was difficult for me to see the card. Maybe you can use that envelope, put the card there. It will improve your performance immensely. <laughs> I, uh, I, I was amazed. You see, discussing and meeting with Jeff was one of the items on my achievement list for that trip. And that was supposed to happen during the book signing, photo taking moment a few days after that. So I was really happy that Jeff came to me and shared me honest, valuable feedback. I mean, it was as if you were singing in a karaoke and Celine Dion comes to you, compliments you on your song, and gives you honest feedback. Just amazing. But what surprised me is that Jeff came to me with a we are equal attitude. And unknowingly from Jeff, at that moment, he shattered completely an illusion that I had. He completely shattered an illusion I did not even know I had. You see, at that time, I believed that celebrities were mainly interested in meeting with high profiles. Like those master magicians were interested mainly to meet and discuss with other master magicians. <laughs> and Jeff, by coming to me that day, showed me that I had an invisible wall just in front of me, an illusion that altered my reality, and I didn't see it. But what about you? Have you met the celebrities that you admire and adore? And if not, why not? Could there be an illusion hiding behind that? In his book, Experiencing the Impossible, The Science of Magic, Gustav Kuhn, who is a researcher in psychology and a magician, shared the latest work in psychology and neuroscience. And those words clearly show that illusions are everywhere, at every moment of our lives. Today, we are exploring, speaking about how to dive beneath the surface. That is how we will be able to find more efficient, more innovative, better solutions to the complex problem we, we, we face. But if you have an illusion that makes you believe that there is no surface at all, how will you be able to dive? And even if you had all the tools, I mean, it would be like having the goggles, the bottle of oxygen, the flippers ready to dive, but you are standing in the front, in the middle of a parking lot. How will you be able to dive? And how would you be able to know if this is an illusion or if this is reality? Because illusions are the core of the art of magic, let's start with a question I get asked a lot. How does magic work? Well, part of the answer is that magic, for a magician for thousands of years have studied human beings. And we found hacks in the way the human brain works. And during our shows, we exploit those hacks. Let me show you what I mean with this car. As you can see, there is a spot on it. And on this side, I have four spots. 
wait, because here I have three, and here six. I know, I know it is amazing to have one spot there, four spots there, three spots here, and six spots there. It is impossible. And it is at that moment that I know who is watching me, not with children-like eyes. <laughs> and those people wonder, Alex, you're a really nice person. You seem really nice, but I think there is more than just one spot there. And you will be correct. I don't have one spot, I have two. But what is really interesting is that your brain assumes that there is a third spot, or completely assume that, completely ignore that something could exist. And that's a fantastic illusion. And on that side, it is exactly the same thing. I don't have four spots, I have five. And either our brain assumes there is a sixth spot there, or assumes that nothing else could be on that card than just those four spots. This is because your brain does something every day, making assumptions. From experience, you've experienced a lot that pattern. You've seen that, the six, the four, the three, the one. You've played dice, you've played dominoes. You've seen that a lot. You are able to recognize it instantly. You also know from experience that something, object, doesn't disappear. If I place my hand behind the card, my hand hasn't disappeared. It is just hidden from view. When you combine all of this, well, you see the four, or you see the six, and the six spot that is hidden behind my hand. And it is completely normal for your brain to make assumptions. <laughs> and now that you have another understanding of that card, you made another set of assumptions. And I can play with that to alter your reality and to make the dots vanish from here and reappear all over there. <laughs> Can applaud if you want. <laughs> the neuroscientist Joe Dispenza estimated that every second through our senses, we receive 11 millions of bits of information. And out of those 11 millions of bits of information, only 2,000 will be brought to our consciousness. That is a filter of 2 in 10,000. Uh, just to give you an idea, if you order 10,000 of those cups like this, 10,000, you order that, that will completely fill the minivan of the delivery person that will deliver those 10,000 cups to you. Completely fill the van. And in that van, completely filled with cups, you will perceive only two of them. This, once again, is normal for your brain. Our brain has one main goal, to help us survive. One way to survive to save energy. One way to save energy is to simplify. Our brain cannot take the 11 millions of bits. It has to select the most important ones. And it selects from the experience. So from everything that you experience from your life, all the things that you've done, you've seen, you identify patterns, things that are always the same, the six, the four, the one, the three, and dominoes and dice. And from those patterns, you create models. And when your brain receives the information, your brain selects the right model, makes the assumption, and then most importantly, considers those assumptions to be true. Because those assumptions, even when they are false, are efficient for our brain. And this is one thing to reach the goal of survival. And it is also why our brain makes it difficult to think that our assumptions could be false. It will only help us challenge our assumptions when something surprising, something unexpected, something that contradicts our models happen, like a card with four sides instead of two. This happens a lot. This simplification process is used a lot in magic shows, of course. But this happens also a lot on everyday lives. Like at the coffee machine, for instance. Imagine. Charlie, young IT engineer, starting this week, like most of his colleagues, at the coffee machine, thinking about the task of the week. I have to work with Jessie. Jessie, she's a really good software programmer, but she's so uncooperative. I mean, every time we had to do work together, I ended up doing the work all by myself. 
I also have uh, that sales team to coach on the new agile practices. <laughs> this is so tiring. They don't want to change. <laughs> Models, assumptions, reality. So I have an invitation for you. An invitation to be curious. To be curious about your own illusions. That is, the next time you will experience a visual, an optical illusion, or the next time you have an opinion about something or someone that has been proven wrong in the long run, look out for that filter of the two in 10,000. Search for those assumptions that made the illusion true, that made the illusion your reality at that moment. Because I think being curious about our illusions help us understand what are those illusions that we have on every day, every moment of our lives. However, I don't think this is enough. Even if I understand that my brain can create the illusion that I'm ready to dive on top of a mountain, in the middle of a parking lot, or in front of the sea, Knowing, understanding that doesn't help me know if this is an illusion or if this is the reality. Neuroscience studies have shown that that filter of the two in 10,000 happen in 230 milliseconds. That is, in two tenths of a second, your brain receives the information, select the model, create the assumption, and make the reality. It is that fast, that automatic. And because it is that fast, that automatic, we don't really have a grasp on that process. And if we want to try to challenge our assumptions, we have to force ourselves to challenge those assumptions, those illusions. Of course, we cannot challenge our illusions or assumptions every time. I mean, just imagine a walk from your home to your office to your university. If we had to challenge each and everything that we saw, receive, heard, it would be impossible to just walk past one meter. However, it is interesting to notice that there are some contexts, some environments, where you are comfortable challenging your illusions, where you are comfortable to know that what you believe is true, what you believe is the reality, is not that real. Like in the magic show. In a magic show, from experience, you know it's all about tricks. So because it is all about tricks, you are okay when your assumptions, when you are deceived, when you see an illusion. But what about those contexts where you don't expect your assumptions to be false? Like the coffee machine. Maybe Charlie's colleague Jessie is not uncooperative. Maybe she has to deal with conflicting or unclear directive instructions from her manager. So I have a little game for you. The next time you observe yourself having an opinion about someone, like he is this, she is that, he is reluctant to change, she is uncooperative, stop. Stop and ask yourself, maybe there is something else going on there. What could it be? And then ask, how could I check? Let me give you an example. He is reluctant to change, stop. Maybe there is something else going on there. What could it be? Maybe he doesn't want to change. Maybe he does want to change, but his manager doesn't want him to change. Maybe he does want to change, his manager doesn't want him to change, but he, he believes that his manager doesn't want him to change. How could I check? And I think by playing this little game, you will discover options you never considered, and you even might find opportunities you never imagined were available. Being curious about your own illusion to understand them, and to understand them so that we know when we have to force to challenge them, I think those are two keys to be able to dive beneath the right surface. But I think there is one more thing we need. Because you see, back in Las Vegas, I didn't challenge my illusions. I didn't even know I had an illusion. It was really like an invisible wall in front of me. I was forced to shatter that illusion and to go through that wall of illusion. When Jeff came to me with that we are equal attitude, he shattered that illusion for me. 
unknowingly from him. <laughs> and I think the key here is humility. By having Jeff coming to me with that we are equal attitude, he was not a victim of his own illusion or illusions of the celebrities that has to despise other people. He was humble about his own illusions. And that invited me indirectly to be humble about my own illusion. And that is the challenge I have for you, to be humble about your own illusions. And that might be the most difficult thing to do in today's world. Because in today's world, we need to be right all the time. Magic tells us it is okay to be wrong sometimes. So the challenge I have for you is really to be humble about your own illusions and maybe even have the courage, the courage to say, I might be wrong. And if you are with friends or colleagues, you can extend that with, I might be wrong. Let's explore that together. So being curious about your own illusions so that you understand them Understanding them so that you know when you have to force yourself to challenge them with that little game that I gave you. And humility to guide you in the process. Those are the three keys I wanted to share with you to be able to go and shatter the, your invisible wall of illusion. And with that, my friends, what seems possible for you today might just be an assumption. And what might be the reality for you, might just be an illusion. <laughs> so now you have all the tools to go in the world, see your invisible wall of illusion, shatter it, go through it. And I wish you a happy diving.